So remember that in this section we are looking at circular motion at constant speed. Okay, let's just go back to this diagram. Remember that we saw that uh, in circular motion um, our velocity, instantaneous velocity vector was perpendicular to our position vector and the velocity vector was always pointing tangent to the circular curve. Now what we're saying in this chapter is that this, the magnitude of this velocity is always constant. It's the specific case that we're studying. So the velocity vector will change its direction as it goes around in the circle, but the size, its magnitude, is the same, which means that we are looking at circular motion at constant speed. So now, obviously an important thing to do is we want to describe this uh, position and its motion. And because this motion lies in a plane, we could describe it using Cartesian coordinates, meaning this position vector R1 is given by X1 uh, and Y1. Okay, and, and uh, this position vector R2 is given by X2 and Y2. But because this radius is constant, okay, because it's circular motion, because the radius is constant, we can rather define it using um, the radius R, which is the magnitude of this position, and also um, a rotational coordinate which is kind of analog analogous to the angle through which it is moved. Okay, so we, wanna, we, want to, we want to describe it using this magnitude r and, um, and a rotational coordinate. Now what is this rotational coordinate? Let's have a look at this picture. First of all, the rotational coordinate is unitless and it's given by this Greek letter theta, okay, but we're used to the, uh, the um, uppercase theta, which is the polar angle, but this is the lowercase theta, and it is unitless. So whereas, whereas the polar angle is measured in degrees or radians, the rotational coordinate, uh, lowercase theta, is unitless. So, in polar coordinates, for example, um, the position of this of this object would be 45 degrees, but in with the uh, lowercase theta, uh, the rotational coordinate is pi over 4. In polar coordinates, this is 90 degrees, but rotational coordinate is pi over 2, and in uh, the, the position of this guy, is 180 degrees in polar coordinates, but pi in rotational coordinate. So it's unitless, but the idea is that it, it, it describes its angular position, um, but it's a rotational coordinate. Okay? So um, the other thing is this. As you can see here, we have a dot, and we have the this circular arrow with this rotational coordinate there. Um, the circular arrow is going counterclockwise around the dot. So the dot is the axis of rotation and the, the, um, the arrow, the circular arrow, describes the direction of motion. Okay? So, and what that means is the direction where we assume that the rotational coordinate is increasing. So in this specific case, we assume that it's increasing counterclockwise. In this case, we would assume that it's increasing clockwise. So we need a, we need a point where, where the rotational coordinate is zero, for example here, and it increases as we go counterclockwise in this specific case. There could be a case where this side was the rotational coordinate is zero, and it increased going this side. Okay, so remember, what are we trying to do? We're trying to we're trying to describe the motion of a particle, 
And so we need a way to describe it and we will use um, magnitude and rotational coordinate. So let we're going to do in the next video, we'll do some e examples. Thank goodness. This is quite confusing.